Starting off the list at number 10, Blister Beetle. Great name, right off the bat. Sounds like a DC Comics supervillain. Blister Beetle, ugh. These little guys are coated in cantharidin. Back in the day, medical experts would use cantharidin to induce blisters. That was a common remedy. Painful, of course, but quite common. Blister Beetles are tiny, and they often sport a metallic green or blue wing cover. They look great, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna touch these guys. If a bird tries to eat one of these, it's gonna get ugly pretty quick. It's, that beetle will not stay down. That beetle will come right back up immediately and then continue on his beetle way. On the outside, cantharidin causes a dermatitis reaction. And if you accidentally eat one of these, just like that bird, it's most likely gonna be your last meal. Yeah, don't eat bugs, period. Let's move on. Number nine, tarantula hawk wasp. Okay, there's another name. Remember when we had to worry about killer wasps for like three months? Is that still a threat? Are they still out there? Is that a false alarm? Can we get some follow-up, please? Well, here's a wasp that you definitely want to avoid. I'll tell you this one for free. The tarantula hawk wasp. As if its name wasn't horrifying enough, let's talk about it. These wasps are so huge, for starters, they have bright orange wings, long legs, their bodies reach about two inches long, which is horrible already, and they're found all over the world, except for Europe. So if you live there, nice, must be nice. No giant wasps to worry about. No Tony Hawk wasps, so I gotta come in and bite you. They're most commonly found in the Grand Canyon, believe it or not. Yep, they just hang out there and eat tarantulas. Great, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. It has one of the worst stings on the planet. Its pain was described as instantly debilitating. See, bullet ant stings, they can last 24 hours and they suck. These ones, they only last five minutes. But it's ranked as the highest on the pain index. So I have to ask, would you rather have the worst pain for five minutes or just a really, really bad pain for 24 hours? Chris? Five minutes. Five minutes, me too. Just get it done with, you know? I don't wanna wait, like hour six, I'd be like, oh, please, this sucks. Number eight, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Dynamite. What happened? What were they doing? Were they sniffing around? What are they doing? What is arsenic and why have we all heard about this before? Well, arsenic is incredibly toxic in its inorganic form. Arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes contaminated water, which leads to arsenic poisoning. So most of the time, you'll develop skin cancer from it. Arsenic has an LD50, around 13 milligrams. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances still. It's still a top dog. It's still a problem. Exposure to toxic metals is a common problem we're still facing today. We're not out of the woods yet, so had to throw it on this list. It sounds old though, right? It's like, oh, arsenic and old lace. Nope, very real. King George III is like, it's, I can tell you, it's real. Number seven, the Indian red scorpion. Scorpions are extremely underrated. These things are like lobsters mixed with snakes, mixed with spiders, just packed full of venom. It's actually horrible. I'm glad I've never seen one in real life even in a zoo or anything. I've never seen a scorpion. I just realized that, wow, okay. Indian red scorpions are of course found in India, and they're also found in Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. They're the most venomous out of the entire scorpion species. The fatality rate is around 40% if you get hit by one of these. So even if you don't die, it's gonna suck. I don't know how else to say that. You'll know if it's an Indian red scorpion because you'll start to sweat like crazy right off the bat. You'll start throwing up, you'll start convulsing, and most likely your body will immediately shut down. It's all physical stuff. You'll pass out, so maybe you won't know if you get bit. Their venom is also on the science side. Yeah, scientists are trying to figure out a way to fight cancer with it, so we don't hate them completely. You know, we're like, hey, stop it, but come here. What are you doing? Let me, let me study you. Don't bite me, but let me see your <laughs> Number six, Black Widow. Another scary bum, another natural scary bum you want to avoid. We've all heard about this one at some point, but just how bad is the Black Widow? Like, will you die? Yep, yeah, probably. The Black Widow is not only extremely painful, but it's also incredibly toxic. At first, you won't even feel anything. You might think you were hit by a mosquito, if that. There'll be slight irritation on the skin, nothing too bad, nothing like the red scorpion. You won't notice at first. But then an hour goes by, you'll start to be confused, you'll be dizzy, you'll be nauseous, your breathing will become difficult, all because of this little thing right here. And her little butt, her little evil butt. See, male Black Widows are much smaller and contain much less venom than the female. Yeah, see, ladies are bad, Chris, they're bad news. A fact that you may have heard already, but I have to mention it, of course, is that the female black widow will actually begin eating the male while they're doing their, you know, spider mating thing. Could you imagine that? How, like, I trusted you, now you're eating me? Get out of here. This event, this horrible event, is called Lactrodectus Mirabilis. Yeah, it sounds like a Harry Potter dark magic spell. It's when you, you know, little midnight snack. Number five, the hooded patooey. I bet you didn't expect a bird to be on this list. Yeah, too busy looking down. 
Now we gotta look up too. I already don't like birds, this is so scary. The hooded patooey sounds mysterious. Why is he wearing a hood? He's wearing a hood because he lives in the rainforest. That's why, of course. These little guys, I'll admit, they're pretty cute. They have an orange red chest with a dark black head. They're beautiful birds that are found mainly on the island of New Guinea. Now some say this bird is scary looking. I mean, I think that's just a negate people from going towards them. I disagree, it's a cute bird. But you should still avoid the hooded patooey. If you see these things, just honestly duck. I don't know what to do, duck, hide. Its skin and feathers are covered in a neurotoxin called homobatrachotoxin. If this bird landed on your shoulder and started to whisper secrets in your ear, I mean sure, you're gonna feel like a Disney princess for a hot minute, but eventually those toxins will start to cause numbness, even just skin contact. These birds are literally taking baths in radioactive puddles. Their neurotoxins come from the beetles that they eat. And you know which beetles I'm talking about, right? You're too good. Number four, comb stars. Ocean life is the scariest thing out there. We're talking about beetles and birds. Yeah, let's look into the sea. This is a nightmare already by itself. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy, crazy fascinating fish every year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence, like a glowing shark. We have a new glowing shark. How amazing is that? Some are small but mighty natural predators, like the comb star, for example. The comb star is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin. It's a deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis. Imagine having this guy in Finding Nemo. That'd be a quick movie. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. So if you have 500 mice, don't let this guy in your house. Also, what do you do for a living? Number three, ricin. This deadly chemical can be found in the seeds of castor oil plants. It looks jarringly similar to table salt. That's the biggest ha about this. And an extremely small amount can take you out. It was also the biggest villain in Breaking Bad, really. He sat there silently for seasons at a time, just waiting waiting for his moment. They also come from castor beans, but unlike toxic plants, you aren't gonna run into any ricin in the wild. You know, there's more steps that need to be done before you accidentally poison yourself in mere minutes. So don't worry too much. Once consumed, ricin enters your cells and then prevents them from making the proteins that they need. That's bad news, you're pretty much toast at that point. Depending on if you inhale, ingest, or inject it, the results may vary. Either way though, it's, it's not gonna feel good. Georgi Markov, he got taken out by a ricin attack back in 1978. It was a small pellet. He had no clue. It's horrible. So deadly. Number two, the blue ringed octopus. You can look, but you most certainly should not touch. In fact, don't even look at this one. I take that back. If you see this thing, you're already too close. Swim away. Get out of there, man. The blue ringed octopus is commonly found in the waters of Australia and Japan. And sometimes they're not even in the water. Yeah, how fun is that? Surprise. If need be, these little guys can walk over rocks into another part of the ocean to avoid danger. Otherwise, they use their tentacles to walk along the ocean floor, which is so alien by itself. They're also believed to be the only other species that dreams. Of course, changing colors while they do so to make them look even more dazzling. The blue ringed octopus is lethal enough to take out 26 adults with an attack. 26. They're filled with two different types of venom in case one was too boring for you. The first can kill their prey while the other can be used as a defense. Either way, this toxin is bad, bad news. They don't get very large too, so watch your toes next time you're walking in hashtag paradise. Number one, poison dart frog. I saved the cutest for last. Yeah, you'd never expect this little guy to be the absolute deadliest frog on the planet. But look at that smile. He's hiding something. You can just tell. Frogs look so mysterious. They're just they're always so wet. That's the sound they're making. If its name didn't tip you off already, the poison dart frog is one of the deadliest animals on Earth. Its shiny yellow skin will certainly attract the eye, but if you decide to you know, catch one of these slippery boys, its poison will, you're, you're absolutely done. Its poison can kill many, many, many adults. Indigenous hunters figured this out early and they coated the tips of their arrows or darts in this exact toxin. They would just grab a frog and be like, thank you, see ya. He's like, he's part of the war, he's helping. The toxin created here is called batrotoxin. Another animal that has it was the hooded patooey. Yeah, so many animals have this. I'm always like hiding them from you and then pulling them out later. There's literally poison everywhere. Thanks for watching, that's a good time. Off this countdown, we have carcinogens in cosmetics. Turns out that the stuff that most of us put on our face daily is actually hazardous for our health. A couple of months ago, traces of asbestos were found in eyeshadow and concealer. Asbestos is known to cause cancer. Not only that, but talc is also found in trace amounts in eyeshadow and concealer, and lead is sometimes found in trace amounts in lipsticks and eyeliners. The worst products, though, 
are waterproof mascara, liquid lipsticks, and long wear foundation. These are the three main products found to have the strongest cancer causing properties. It's because these products are made up of forever chemicals. Forever chemicals are a group of synthetic chemicals that are used to make the products waterproof or last long. They also contain PFAs, a highly toxic fluorinated chemical, and they aren't even put on the packages as a warning, and that is scary. In our ninth spot, we have glycol ethers. Glycol ethers are another dangerous chemical found in cosmetics, as well as cleaning products and paints. Imagine that, cleaning your home, being like, ah, this will be better for me. Meanwhile, you're putting yourself at more of a risk. Anyways, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, glycol ethers is commonly found in cleaning products, liquid soaps, and cosmetics. But they are also found in degreasers, aerosol paints, adhesives, sunscreens, inks, and dyes. Short term exposure can cause serious kidney and liver damage, along with necrosis and pulmonary edema. Long term exposure causes tremors and neurological and blood effects. So make sure to check the label when buying your products to prevent prevent buying something with this chemical. Moving on to number eight, we have phthalates. Phthalates are chemicals used to help scents and chemicals bind together. They are found in shampoos, conditioners, perfumes, hairsprays, colognes, soaps, nail polish, you name it. They're even found in shower curtains, food packaging, and vinyl flooring. Well, it's found that exposure to this chemical can cause liver, kidney, lung, and reproductive damage. Not only that, but it can cause brain damage and lower your IQ. It's scary because we all use these products on the daily. Now, one way to avoid contact with this is to get unscented products, avoid microwaving your food in plastic, and not buying any plastic items labeled as number three, number six, or number seven. Those are the ones that contain this toxin. In our seventh spot, we have lead. Now, if you have a newer home, then you don't need to worry about this. But before 1978, houses were being painted with lead-based paint. That was before they found out how dangerous this was. Obviously, lead-based paints are banned today, but if you have an older home, you need to make sure that your walls weren't painted with it. It's said that 38 million homes in America still have lead-based paint. That is insane. Even exposure to low levels of this can cause brain and kidney damage and puts women at an increased risk of miscarriage. The hazard comes from when the paint chips off and creates lead dust that you then breathe in on the daily. In fact, this is the most common source of lead poisoning. In our sixth spot, we have antiperspirants. Nobody likes sweaty or stinky pits, which is why deodorant was invented. But the thing that blocks the sweat in antiperspirants is aluminum. Exposure to aluminum can cause breast cancer as well as severe memory loss. It can also cause brain disease and nervous system problems. The best way to avoid this is by looking for natural deodorants, which sucks because you're still gonna sweat, but at least you won't smell bad and you're not poisoning yourself. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with polytetrafluoroethylene. Say that 10 times fast. This chemical can be found in non-stick pans, which are hella convenient, but if used wrong, they can be hella deadly. So apparently, if you use your pan at high temperatures, the Teflon coating on the pan will break down and it will emit a toxic gas. When you inhale those fumes, it can cause polymer fume fever, aka Teflon flu. More serious cases of this can lead to lung damage and reproductive problems. A way to avoid this would be cooking on low heat and avoid getting your pans scratched or just use stainless steel or iron skillets instead. Coming in at number four, we have the pesticides, but we all know about this one already. Pesticides are sprayed on crops to avoid bugs from eating them. As a result, it contaminates our food, soil, and water supply which is one of the reasons why you learn to wash off your fruits and veggies before eating them. It's to wash off any residue from the pesticides, but we still end up coming in contact with them. This can cause birth defects, cancer, kidney and liver and lung damage, among other things. Some pesticides also act as an endocrine disruptor and have been proven to harm animals and humans. 
The people most at risk to pesticides are the young or pregnant or nursing women. In our third spot today we have air pollution. I mean this one is a given. Air pollution even at low levels has a great impact on human health. Obviously air pollution is caused by the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil or gas. Breathing in polluted air can lead to lung disease, cancer, heart disease or heart problems, increased hospitalizations and premature death. It also has a negative impact on our skin as well, but you know what, that's nothing compared to heart disease or cancer. In fact, a study found that one third of deaths from stroke, lung cancer and heart disease were due to air pollution. Like that is insane! In fact, it's about on the same page as smoke and tobacco. And it's more dangerous than the effects of having a crappy diet. It's scary because this is something that we can't control. Like we can exercise and eat healthy, but we can't control the air that we breathe in. I mean, we can, don't pollute, but still. In our second spot, we have mercury. Mercury is a naturally occurring element that is very dangerous to humans. And it's scary, but we are potentially exposed to it on the daily. For example, some fish contain mercury, so eating too much fish can actually lead to mercury poisoning. Mercury poisoning symptoms can include muscle weakness, kidney problems, and brain and lung damage. Other sources of mercury are found in silver colored dental fillings, fluorescent light bulbs and thermometers. But the light bulbs and thermometers are only a hazard if they break open. Exposure to mercury can also cause central nervous system issues, impaired vision, paralysis and immune system complications. And in our number one spot today we have polybrominated diaphanol ethers. Scarily enough, this chemical is found in most baby care products. Why? Well, this chemical is used as a flame retardant, aka it slows down the speed of a flame. So they're in high chairs, cribs, and strollers. So every day, your child might be exposed to this chemical. Not only that, but it's found in televisions, computers, insulation, sofas, pillows, and mattresses. Yes, the thing you lay on and sleep on daily. And mattresses contain high levels of this. The health problems associated with this chemical are brain and reproductive damage, thyroid problems, and neurological disorders. Kicking off the list at number 10, formaldehyde. You may have heard this one before at one point or another, but formaldehyde is all over your house. Spoiler alert. You might just not know it. It's commonly found in cleaning products, lotions, cosmetics, lots of shampoos, definitely a lot of shampoos. Next time your phone's dead and you catch yourself reading the back of those labels and you're doing one of these, keep an eye open for this one. Formaldehyde is a strong smelling colorless gas, also commonly found in building materials. So it's in there, which is here, and also over there. Not great, don't breathe that in. It's literally in your home you can find this stuff. It's in plywood, glues. Formaldehyde is also found in tobacco smoke. So next time you're breathing in that secondhand smoke, remember that and be like, sorry guys, <coughs> I don't smoke. You don't, you don't have to do it like that sassy, but you know, just let them know. A study found that higher levels of formaldehyde are bound to the DNA in white blood cells if you do smoke. So if you need another reason to quit, there it is. Number nine, flame retardants. The less house fires we have, the better, right? That's where flame retardants come in. They are these chemicals added to furniture so that if a fire were to start, it wouldn't act as fabulous flint. Instead, these retardants are added to slow it down. You can't drop a lit cigarette on your couch and then 34 seconds later, you don't have a home anymore. You can't be doing that, all because you nodded off, no way. Since the 70s, these were added to furniture and you can find it now in mattresses, couches, blinds, curtains, carpets, anything that looks cozy, essentially, odds are it's very flammable. While it's great that we're not starting fires as much, we're still hurting the environment now. Many flame retardants have been removed from the process because they don't break down after their initial use. These chemicals can build up in people or animals over time. It's not good, you don't want any of that here. Number eight, chloroform. This one we've heard about also in one way or another, we've seen it in movies and stuff. Chloroform, if you inhale this, you're going to sleep quite fast, it's no good. Is chloroform out there just hidden in plain sight? I included it in this list, this is kind of concerning. Well, according to the EPA, yes, chloroform is out there all around us, but don't worry about getting knocked out on your way to work, it's not that strong. Chloroform is often released into the air through bodies of water. It's the chlorination of wastewater, pools, and breathing it in can lead to liver problems. Chloroform is created when chlorine mixes with organic compounds. Back in 2002, there was a study done to measure the levels of chloroform in public swimming pools, and there was enough 
enough of the chemical to link to miscarriages. Yeah, not great. Number seven, non-ill phenols. Remember the Tide Pod challenge when you know we had to launch a global campaign to get adults not to chew on laundry detergents? That was a good time, that was classic. Don't do that, if you're thinking about it and you've ever thought about it, don't. I don't know what you need to see don't ever do that. Well, those common deadly substances, as we all learned about via Twitter, was non-ilphenols. They're more often than not found in laundry detergent or other hygiene products that we don't eat. Don't eat any hygiene products, period. The EPA has discovered that this chemical can lead to reproductive problems in rodents. A huge concern for the release of these chemicals is also in the aquatic system. NP, its shorter name, which I should have brought up at the beginning of this point, has also been detected in human breast milk, urine, and blood. Number six, triclosan. Now we gotta worry about toothpaste harming us. Come on, that's not cool. Brushing is more fun than ever these days with the whole, you know, charcoal toothpaste. What a time to be alive. We love trendy mouth care. The antimicrobial chemical triclosan has been banned by the FDA, and it's an ingredient often added to consumer products in order to reduce bacterial contamination. And it was often found in soaps, body washes, cosmetics, and toothpaste. Now it's been removed from most of this stuff, but in a 2017 study by the journal Environmental Science and Technology, triclosan can build up over time on your toothbrush. You know, while sitting in that dirty SpongeBob SquarePants coffee mug that you've had for 17 years. Yeah, give it a rinse, maybe. It builds up and over time it can absorb into your bloodstream every time you brush, putting your gut and hormones at risk. It's actually highly toxic to fish, even though Canada's federal health and environment ministries say that it's safe for humans. It's not great. Aquatic organisms are at risk here. Stop. I'm like, stop brushing your teeth? I don't know the solution here. I don't know that much. I can tell you what it is, but I don't know the solution. Comment down below. Number five, DEET. Being a Canadian, I'm forced into the outdoors a lot. Friends with cottages always want to go up, and I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. I'll stay in the water the entire time or inside. Yeah, I'll just beat them and be like, I'm not going outside. I'm a Sudoku guy now. Just to avoid mosquitoes. I don't like it. I can't do it. And I know I'm not alone here. I just hold on to the bug spray the entire time of the entire trip. That ingredient used to keep those pests away is called DEET. Now, on one hand, it wards away whatever's trying to take a bite from you, but on the other hand, literally, if you use enough of it, you'll develop rashes. DEET toxicity isn't common. It usually happens when you fool around with this kind of stuff. Spray it into your mouth or your eyes and stuff like that. Enjoy the outdoors, I guess, but do so responsibly. Also, if you go outside and you like outside, just stop. Be inside, play video games, be a hermit. It's too cold out there. I don't like it. Number four, poison ivy. They always say leaves of three, let them be, but you know what I say, if you're not sure, don't touch anything in the world ever. That's my rule, you can follow that. It doesn't rhyme yet, but we'll work on it. Poison ivy is found all over the United States, more commonly in the Eastern states. And we of course have lots up here in Canada. I've been a victim to poison ivy before. I'll tell you, it only takes one time. The itchy rash that you get after you touch that part of the plant is caused by urushi oil. Now this oily resin is stored in the leaves. Now one time my friend put that leaf and rubbed it all over his face because it was like a hairy leaf and he was intrigued by this. He was like, oh, it's soft, so I'm gonna do this. Yeah, he went to the emergency. His face was didn't look great. Scariest thing I ever seen. Don't touch poison ivy. Also, don't inhale smoke from this plant too. If you're thinking about burning it, and maybe that'll solve the problem, sure, but just plug your nose and run far away. Also, don't light any fires, please. Thanks. Number three, holly. Tis the season. Okay, let's talk about it. When I hear about holly or jolly and or holly and jolly, I think of something delicious, right? All the songs, it's like I have a holly jolly Christmas. It's like, mmm, yummy. These are not delicious. If you're seeing red looking berries anywhere, just don't eat them. The American holly is pretty common. It's actually now an ornament for the holidays. The American holly, AKA the Ilex opaca, is a tasty treat for birds, but if you see them eating these berries, don't copy them. They can eat poison pellets all day long and be fine. They can fly. Can we fly? No, don't eat berries. If we ingest holly, we're welcoming an alarming amount of toxins. One being illicin, which is a good way of you know vomiting and having nausea and all that nasty normal stuff. Now normally I wouldn't include holly on a list like this because it's not too bad or common, but like I said, tis the season. Number two, asbestos. Have you ever made the leap of faith and explored your own attic? You get the broom and push it up and you're like, I know it, there's ghosts in there, I feel it, I hear them at night. It's usually creepy, Dark, cold, and boring. It's just a wall of pink fluff, usually pink insulation. Asbestos is a natural mineral made of these thin fibers, and its primary use was for fireproofing, and its origins and use date back to the first century. It was used mainly as an insulator, and due to its fibers being so fine and heat resistant, that's why it looks all fluffy, it could be added to cement, paper, or cloth, you name it, in order to make them more durable. Its dangers weren't widely known until the late 80s, that's when the EPA banned the use of asbestos. That's because if you breathe it in, you're getting lung cancer. 
essentially. Not all the time, but you're definitely opening the door to lots of lung cancer. Houses built before the 80s have a higher chance of exposure to asbestos hiding in your walls, and most importantly, your insulation. It's a rare type specifically due to asbestos insulation called mesothelomia. More than 39,000 Americans lost their lives a year because of asbestos related disease, so it's pretty common. Also, another reason to not go in your attic. There you go, you can tell them I sent you. Number one, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. What is arsenic and why have we heard of this before? It's incredibly toxic in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes these contaminated waters, which leads to arsenic poisoning. That's how it happens, it comes from the ground. So most of the time, what you're getting out of this whole deal is skin cancer. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams, so the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances. It's a top dog. Exposure to toxic metals is still a common problem that we're facing today. You can find arsenic in seafood, rice, or cereal now. So keep your eye open. Yeah, you think finding shrimp tails in your cereal is horrible enough, now we gotta worry about arsenic. It comes naturally from water, soil, and bedrock, most commonly in the Midwest, United States, and areas of Texas. And at one point in time, they used to make arsenic dresses. It was like green colored dresses. It was really flammable, and it was green, and it just was all bad. If you inhaled it, you were just getting poisoned. You'd foam with the mouth, your eyes would turn green. It was bad. Arsenic, terrible. 10, mancanial tree. If you came to this list looking for poison ivy stats, well, you've got another thing coming. The mancanil tree, upon first glance, looks pretty normal. In fact, it looks almost inviting and welcoming. The tropical tree grows a low-hanging fruit, and it can be found most commonly in the Caribbean, Central America, and South Florida. So if you live there, um, don't touch this tree. Sick. And for sure, don't eat the fruit. Also, if you're hungry, just wait till lunch. In fact, don't touch this tree at all. Don't even breathe in the air around this tree. For real, it's that bad. The mancanil is referred to as the beach apple or la manzanilla de la muerte, which translates to little apple of death. Yummy. The plant is riddled with toxins. Even if you put this apple in your mouth and spat it out, the inside of your mouth would still be blistered and your throat as well. It's not comfortable. The tree contains this chemical called forbel. It's so poisonous that if you were to stand under the tree while it was raining to avoid frizz, the water rolling off the tree would burn your skin on contact. So if you're a tree hugger, um, skip this one. Number nine, hogweed. No, Harry Potter does not smoke this. In fact, he doesn't even touch it, because he's a Gryffindor. We should all be more like the chosen one. Native to Europe and some parts of the US, hogweed, or giant hogweed, is, like its name hints, quite tall. They grow up to 14 feet sometimes, so they look pretty threatening before you get close. Its leaves can stretch out quite far with an umbrella pattern. It's a poison disc with purple and white hairs, basically. Now, its sap contains these toxic chemicals called photosensitizing purinocumarins. These chemicals, once on your skin and then in contact of sunlight, start to burn and cause large blisters. So the sunlight will activate this burn like you're a vampire all of a sudden. How weird is that? It's horrible, and on top of that, if the sap gets in your eyes, well, you may become blind. There's quite a few lookalikes to the toxic giant hogweed, but again, like I said, just avoid plants you don't know. If it's fuzzy, odds are it's not gonna feel good later. Always bring toilet paper. Number eight, snake toxin. And here's why I don't f with snakes. Fun fact, did you guys know there's over 600 species of venomous snakes? So uh, yeah, watch your step, I guess. Now I'll admit the ratio isn't too bad. Less than 10% of all snakes can really hurt us. But that small percentage, well, it's enough to wipe out 100,000 people a year. So still pretty bad. Vipers are commonly known, the eastern brown snake, just, you know, horrible creatures. But what is it about their venom that does so much damage in the first place? Well, snake venom is extremely complicated. The way we test its toxicity is by using the LD50 test. And the lower the rating, the more dangerous the toxins are. Remember that for later. Alongside the eastern brown snake, the mainland tiger snake and the Russell viper come in pretty low on the ID50 test. Sure, the dangerous snakes often look the part, but take the boom slang, for example. It avoids confrontation, looks pretty similar to non-lethal snakes, but after one bite, you will eternally bleed until you're dead. From him, that little guy, little licky tongue. That's it, you're dead. Number seven, cyanide. This one can harm you both in gas form and in powder form. How fun. 
perhaps one of the more well-known poisons out there. Cyanide, of course, can kill you in just minutes. Potassium cyanide can take your life in minutes if it's consumed, but it's confusing what cyanide really does to your body, especially when we weigh in James Bond villains. Like in Spectre, the movie Spectre, Javier Bardem's character pulls out these fake teeth to show that his mouth was burnt horribly after trying to swallow hydrogen cyanide. Great movie, also not really accurate. The reason you shouldn't consume or get near cyanide is that after consuming it, it starts to replace the O2 in your bloodstream, so really it's the most harmful to your brain and your heart. Inspector, that wasn't cyanide, that was like acid. But we can pretend that it is. Avoid breathing it in, don't even look at it. In fact, don't even watch the movie Spectre. It's pretty long, I don't know, it's not my favorite of the bunch. Number six, VX. This yellow, tasteless, and odorless liquid can kill you with just one touch. The NERB agent VX is, of course, extremely illegal. It came from ICIS's research from the early 50s when they were developing new insecticides. Well, it worked, but it worked a little too well and was swiftly outlawed. But the bell cannot be unrung. This was the same nerve gas that was used to take out Kim Jong Nam back in 2017. He was attacked in an airport, two people rubbed a cloth on his face covered in VX and he died on the way to the hospital. He had a horrible seizure because of this. Initially officials thought that cyanide was used but in reality it was only 10 milligrams of VX. This oily liquid. It looks evil. Like It looks like bad goo. Number five, ricin. One of the biggest villains in the show Breaking Bad. Next to, of course, Ricin is a chemical found in the seeds of castor oil plants. It looks alarmingly similar to table salt and an extremely small amount of this can kill you. They also come from castor beans, but unlike toxic plants, you aren't going to run into any ricin in the wild. There's also more steps that need to be done before you accidentally poison yourself in mere minutes. Once consumed, ricin enters your cells and then it prevents them from making the proteins that they need, subsequently dying. So your cells die fast. So depending on if you inhale it, ingest it, or inject it, the results may vary. And by results, I mean it depends how long it'll take before you meet your, you know. Georgi Markov, for example, he got taken out by a ricin attack. It was in 1978, he was waiting for a bus, and a man in a black umbrella, well rather an air gun disguised as an umbrella, shot his right thigh. And it wasn't until three days later that that little sting contained trace amounts of ricin. Number four, arsenic. The deadly poison that supposedly took out George III of England and Napoleon Bonaparte. What is arsenic and why have we heard this name so many times before? It's incredibly toxic in its inorganic form, but arsenic is a natural component in the ground, so it causes contaminated water, air, anything really, it just goes out of the ground. Which leads to arsenic poisoning, so most of the time you develop skin cancer because of it. That's its main attack, skin cancer, horrible. Arsenic has an LD50 around 13 milligrams. The Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry has arsenic on its priority list of hazardous substances. It's a top dog, it's up there. Exposure to toxic metals is a common problem that we're facing still to this day. Number three, poison oak. I remember in elementary school, there was a kid in my class who rubbed poison oak on his face because it was soft. Idiot. Don't do this. This is why we're doing a list on deadly substances. For people like Andrew, his face didn't react well. It blew up, it was this massive rash. Poor kid had to go home. Didn't have a good time. Poison ivy, we all know about. We're good there for the most part, but I have to mention poison oak because I think we should genuinely know this. Poison oak is so much worse. There's another one called poison sumac. Just poison, 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 no. These plants produce a harmful oil called urishi oil, and the rash that follows after you make contact is called contact dermatitis. See, like ricin, it only takes a small amount to cause a huge rash. Poison ivy is known for its leaves. Each one has three tips. Leaves of three, let it be, we all know that one. Poison oak, same idea, but with fuzz on the underside, and has a lighter top. Poison oak, what a joke. There, it rhymes, now we'll all remember. Deal, let's move on. Don't touch plants that have hair. Number two, the kissing bug. Now I know it sounds friendly, maybe a little too friendly, but this bug is not a lover at all. The small kissy boy carries with it a plethora of diseases, one of which is called the Chagas disease. Also known as triatomine bugs, but kissing bugs sounds way better. These little guys are known to suck blood out of humans, like vampires. Why is everything kind of vampire-like on this list? We're pretty up to date with disease bugs like mosquitoes or ticks, but I wanted these guys on the list too because I've never heard of a kissing bug before. They're called that because they usually bite you near the mouth or the eyes. This area here. It carries the Trypanosoma cruzi parasite and it passes to you after the bug poops on your face. That's the main way of spreading the parasite. They bite you and then they fart in your eyes. How rude is that? They should call this one the stink bug because that 
stinks. Number one, super acid. Yeah, super acid. Of course we're gonna finish off with super acid. Let's do it, we can't end it on a bug. Fluoroantimonic acid is that sci-fi acid that you see that melts through like a spaceship or anything like that. It's a real thing, and it's caused by mixing hydrogen fluoride and antimony pentafluoride. Hot combo. This acid can only be mixed with hydrofluoric acid because it's too strong to be mixed with water. It would just go, gone. Nothing even there anymore. Super acid, it's 20 quintillion times stronger than sulfuric acid. This can not only dissolve your skin tissues and muscle, but it can dissolve glass. Glass. The reason we have acids this strong in the first place is that so chemists can break down molecules. Now, some of these molecules are tougher, so they resist common acids. Imagine being stronger than acid. Science is crazy. My brain hurts. Let's wrap this up. Guys, those were 10 substances you really don't want to touch. I threw in some animals, some plants, some acids, but let us know if a part two is in your interest. There's a lot of shit out there we shouldn't be touching, and that thumbs up button is definitely not one of them. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters, and we'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. See ya.